the first partial skull of a 250,000 year old Homo naledi child has been found in the Rising Star Cave in Johannesburg. This site happens to be the richest for fossil hominins in Africa, in fact. The discovery was made by a team of researchers from WITS and 13 other universities. The Rising Star Cave is the same site where the first discovery of the Homo naledi uh, occurred in 2015. Leading that project was WITS University's uh, paleoanthropologist and National Geographic explorer in residence, Professor Lee Berger. He joins us now live via our video link. That's quite a title you've got there, Prof. Good morning. Thanks very much for joining Good us this morning, morning on the program. Please. The Rising Star Cave, it's brought us so many discoveries. It really is incredible. You know, it, it's, it's hard to imagine that right here on the doorstep of Johannesburg, we have a site that's yielded more individual remains of ancient human relatives than any other site on the continent. In fact, it probably is the richest in the world. Wow. Wow. Incredible. So tell us about the latest discovery. It was announced yesterday, I believe. But I'm sure months of work went into it before that announcement. In fact, years of work. Yes. The, the announcement is about this little skull right here, which I hope you can see. The, uh, the little skull uh, that we called Letty or the lost one. The reason we give this little skull that name is uh, she comes from a place distant from where all the other Homo naledi fossils uh, came from. Some of your viewers may remember back in 2015 when we announced Homo naledi, most of them came from the Dinaledi chamber, almost 1,500 remains of uh, almost two dozen individuals. Mm. Little Letty skull was found about 12 meters beyond that. Now, that, that doesn't sound like a long way to you, but in a cave like Rising Star, that, that 12 meters is something like a 10-minute journey. Sure. In a little 15-centimeter slot uh, into a wall sitting on a little ledge and just her skull. So her skull was alone there. Now, children's skulls of these ancient human relatives are incredibly rare. They're the rarest sought after objects literally on the planet. For every adult, there's probably like 10 or 20 adults for every child. Mm. So it's valuable from a biological perspective to look at growth and development. But I think what is capturing most people and is the greater mystery is why is this little skull there? And it's just the skull. So it appears as if just her skull was placed on this ledge in this extraordinarily remote place. Yeah. So you're referring to her as a child, uh, four to six years old. Uh, that, that's the that's age right. that you're putting it at. That's right. And we can tell that because if you see, she has both adult dentition. That's the uh, dentition you see not erupted yet. And she's got deciduous uh, dentition. And so in a human, that would be about the comparable age yeah. to where her dentition would be. Her brain is, is very tiny. It's about a third to a quarter the size of a modern human, about 480 to 600 cubic centimeters. That's sort of the size of my fist. Yeah, yeah. So, so Prof, I mean, you know, what, how, how do you make sense of this discovery? Because as you say, it was the skull that was discovered. The rest of the skeleton uh, you haven't found yet. It, it doesn't look like we're going to either, at least not where she, her skull was resting. Mm. And that leaves us with this intriguing thing of how do you get a skull there? I think if, if it were a human, and these are not humans. Remember, this is a, a relative of ours. We're not even sure how they're related to it. They have much smaller brains, closer to the size of chimpanzees. They mm. walked on two legs. Um, when we announced Homo naledi in 2015, you right, might remember that we said that we thought that the reason there were so many bodies was that they were deliberately disposing of their dead in there. Now, that was hugely controversial. Because the idea that something with that small a brain doing something that only humans do was incredibly uh, dramatically received in the archaeological and, and paleoanthropological field. So we then went on to find uh, Mayo. You're, yes. you're, you're saying they were buried, essentially. Like in, 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 well, we're saying that we, we originally said that they were deliberately disposed of. We've yeah. been working since then to find out. Well, could they have been actually ritually put there in a sort of burial type mm. situation? We then found Neo, if you remember, in the Seti chamber, a, a male homo naledi. He was actually in an alcove. Now we add to that mystery Letty, mm. who is in even a more distant area than any of those, and actually sitting on a shelf. The skull didn't get there by carnivores, didn't get there by scavengers, wasn't washed in there. We can tell that from the geology. You have to ask the question. What other answer is there other than perhaps one of her relatives 250,000 years ago placed that skull there? 
Um, it's something that at this point we're still testing, but we've got other discoveries and other explorations in that area that may add to this story. And we may have just discovered the, the first non-human species that performs ritual practices mm. related to death. Of laying their dead to rest effectively. E effectively that. And if that's true, it's astounding because it sort of, it, it changes everything we view about the sort of special nature of being human. Incredible. So, so, Prof, you know, a discovery like this, how much can you extrapolate from this little skull that you found apparently on a shelf so far into uh, the depths of the Rising Star Cave? How much can you extrapolate from that insofar as the life of Homo naledi? So if you move away from just that idea, you know, the idea of, of the... Um, uh, uh, the mystery of why it's there. These little skulls of juveniles are incredibly valuable for understanding how the uh, species like Omanalei grew up. It gives us a, a moment in childhood. Were they under stress? Were they developing at normal rates? It tells us how quickly they grew up. So because, you see, once you get to adulthood, you start deteriorating. Oh, sorry to say that to most people. You actually start going backwards and deteriorating as you move towards death during the rest of your life, little children are continuing to grow. And so in every part of their bone, in their enamel, we learn about their growth and development, were they under stress, how quickly were they doing it, and we learn a lot more about the sort of developmental nature of the species. They are incredibly valuable. Yeah. It will provide research for decades. Well, congratulations on this latest discovery, uh, Professor Berger. I, I suppose your work in the Rising Star Cave is, is just ongoing. It, it's actually just begun. We happen to know that there are literally thousands of remains that we've left in place mm. uh, inside the Rising Star our system for not only science and technology to advance, and not just because we, we don't have the capacity to take them out, but also for future generations of science. Mm. This is truly one of the most remarkable sites of discovery for any ancient human relative in the world. And so we have to also protect that information for future generations. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's right here in South Africa, right here in Johannesburg. Right Professor. here in the cradle of humankind, right on our doorstep. Professor Lee Berger, let me thank you for your time this morning. Thanks so much for that incredibly important discussion. And congratulations once again to you and your team. The first partial skull of a 250,000-year-old Homo naledi child has been found in the Rising Star Cave in Johannesburg. Uh, the age of that skull, four to six years of age.